most of us have heard of Ptolemy's cyclic quadrilateral theorem. It's really famous. But there are actually two of these cyclic quadrilateral theorems by Ptolemy. And the second one is one that uh, almost nobody's ever heard of. We'll call the first cyclic quadrilateral theorem, we'll call that Ptolemy 1. And that is an expression about the product of diagonals. Ptolemy 2, however, well, Ptolemy 2, that has to do with the ratio of the diagonals. So we have this beautiful symmetry. Ptolemy 1 is the product of diagonals. Ptolemy 2 is the ratio. And in this video, I want to talk about Ptolemy 2. This is the one that nobody studies, but it's actually very, very beautiful. And the proof is beautiful too, and I want to show you. This is what we mean by a cyclic quadrilateral. Look at the vertices A, B, C, D. And what do you notice? Well, these vertices are on a circle. And not every quadrilateral has its vertices on a circle. In general, this is not true. Uh, so if the vertices are on a circle, this is a special kind of quadrilateral with a special name, cyclic quadrilateral or concyclic vertices or something like that. But the word cyclic is the important word here. So let's have a look at this carefully. And we see that there are two, two diagonals. We have uh, AC and BD. I've just labeled it some way. And we've labeled the sides. Okay, so we have diagonals. And W, X, Y, Z are the sides. And M is the midpoint. Uh, it, well, it's not the midpoint. It's the um, intersection point of the diagonals. And I need M. Why do I need M? Well, with M, I... I can make similar triangles. And with these similar triangles, I will be able to prove um, Ptolemy's second cyclic quadrilateral theorem. So what does it look like? Well, let me show you how to write it down. There, Ptolemy's theorem two. But there's kind of an art to how you can write this down. There's a beautiful symmetry to it. Okay, let's see. So AC is this diagonal here, all right? So I take these two sides and I write down uh, the product. So I do AC first and I have WZ and then I take these two. You see there, they straddle the line AC. You get it? And then uh, I add Y uh, X here, and then I'm going to do the similar thing here. Okay, let me erase some of this. Now, B, C, B, B, D, sorry, not B, C. B, D is this way. Okay, let me fix that. A, C over B, D. All right, so uh, if we look at what straddles this line, what is on both sides of this line? Well, I've got Z and Y. Okay, so I can do... Uh, well, I could actually start here, Y and X, because that gives me a nice symmetry. And here, Z and Y. Let's use a different color. Z and Y straddles it. I'll write it as Y and Z like this. So it's very interesting. Now look, look at the symmetry of this. I have Z X here and X Z here, you see? So, okay, so that's the process for how to write down Ptolemy's theorem, uh, second theorem for any cyclic quadrilateral. So I give you a cyclic quadrilateral labeled in any which way, and you should be able to write down the theorem instantly uh, just by looking at the labels. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you some exercises to, to do to practice just that. Now, if you're good at geometry, you could look at this and you instantly see that these two angles, let's call them alpha, they're the same. And how do we know that? Well, one way to explain it to you is to declutter this figure. 
I will uh, remove some elements of this figure to make it uh, easier to see. And there we go. So by Thales theorem, Thales is circle theorem. Well, the angle formed by uh, lines that intercept this this chord here, uh, there those angles are always the same. So if I put A here, or if I put A here, and then I do the same intercepting of that chord, this is also going to be alpha. And so the angle here is also alpha. So I've I've done it. I've done I've um, proved that these two are alpha. <laughs> so Thales's theorem is really really great, and uh, there it's actually something I. I'm going to do a video on it. There's like some really cool basic things that I want to talk about because basic stuff is often pretty mind expanding in a different way. And Thales' theorem and segment division really deserve their own uh, videos. I'm going to get around to that. <laughs> Here I've removed other elements of my cyclic quadrilateral. And I can see here this chord is being intercepted by this angle here at D and an angle at A. And they have to be the same angle, again, by Thales' theorem. So we'll call it beta, and let's go up here, and we'll put beta here and beta here. So we've got uh, two pairs of angles that are the same. So let's keep going with this idea. Here's another one. This time my chord is here. And these two points create angles uh, with these lines that intercept the chord at AD. And so therefore they must be equal. We'll call this here gamma and the other one gamma here and here like this. So let's go back up here. This is going to be gamma. Yeah, and this one here has got to be gamma. Well, I got one, one more. Where can I fit that? Maybe I'll reduce these figures and I can fit it in. Hang on. There we go. Now the uh, chord we're looking at is here, A, B, and we've got these angles at these points. We'll call that delta. It's hard to see, but that's a delta and that's a delta. So let's go back up here and we can, we can we can polish off this figure. Let's put a delta here and a delta here. That's the same thing here. So it's a lot clearer when you remove some of these uh, lines and labels and some such. And then you think about Thales' theorem and it becomes clear. We can write down all these angles. So that, that was um, easy and really fun to do. Part three, our job now is to look for similar triangles. It's like looking for gold. Well, first we notice that this and this, these two angles have to be the same uh, because that's basic geometry. And then these two angles here, they are also the same. That's basic geometry. And look carefully. So beta gamma, beta gamma here. Well, of course, the third angle has to be the same. So these two triangles, uh, the upper and lower one, those are similar. And now what else? Well, let's choose a different color. Delta alpha and delta alpha here. Well, these two are similar. So there we have it. We have found two pairs of similar triangles and that's enough to prove what we need to prove. And notice that M played a role in this. That was uh, very nice. Now, I don't want to start writing down masses of relationships of the similar triangles uh, and just do it out in a disorganized way. What we need is a strategy. The first thing we're going to do is choose little a. What is little a? Well, we take any one of these segments, a, m, MC, MB, or MD, any of these pieces of the diagonal, and we call it A, and we pretend that it's known, and we hope this A cancels out. So for, for our problem, uh, I'm going to choose 
A is MB. So I'll put A here. But I could have chosen it here or here or here. It doesn't matter. I could have done any of those other ones. And my strategy will be to solve for the other pieces for this one, this one, and this one in terms, in terms of, in terms of the sides, W, X, Y, Z. So that is the strategy. And with this idea, it will become uh, much easier to kind of understand how this proof works. If you just remember this, this strategy, choose an A and then solve for the other pieces of the diagonal using relationships of similar triangles. This will guide you in, into what similar triangle relationships you need. So let me begin with the left and right uh, similar triangles, the green, the green ones. Let's not forget that this segment is called A. So we want to solve for something here. Let's look at the angle delta. So delta, well, that, let's look at this one here, delta. It corresponds to side AM. And uh, delta on the small triangle, that corresponds to little a, you see? Delta is here, and little a is opposite delta. Okay, and that is equal to, well, let's look at what's opposite this angle, z, and this one here is x. So that's our first uh, relationship. We were able to solve z a over x. We're able to solve for a m, so we know this piece here, this is known now, this is good. So actually, let's go back up here and we can, can color this in. I'll color it in this purpley color to, to show that it's known. And actually, this is kind of known because we call it A. So we need two more of these pieces. We need this one and this one. Okay, so let's hope we can get that from the other triangle, the, the other pair of similar triangles. Uh, let me shrink this figure here. There, now I have enough room. All right, so we're looking here at our second pair of similar triangles, the upper and lower one. Right, so let's see. Let's try beta, angle beta. Let's get my black color back. Angle beta corresponds to MC on the upper triangle, and on the lower triangle, beta corresponds to A, like this. Okay, and upper triangle, this, we can take Y, and that corresponds to W on the lower triangle. So I end up getting MC equals YA over W. Very good. So I've got MC now. So let's go back here. We've got, and erase this, we've got MC done. The, the last thing we need is MD, this one. How do, how do we get MD? Let's try to think about that. Well, for that, let's try angle gamma. So gamma, that gives us MD. Yeah, that's what we want. That's what we're looking for. And gamma on the lower triangle corresponds to AM. And you say, well, I need to express that in terms of uh, the sides. Yeah, yeah, well, we already have that over here, you see. So we're doing well. So, okay, uh, gamma MD, gamma AM, and I can do the same thing with these sides. MD belongs to the upper triangle, so that's Y over W, and uh, MD is Y over W AM, but we know uh, AM, MD is Y, Z, A over W, or I can write it like this, Yaz over W, X, sorry, let's not forget the X over here. So we've got everything, let's go back up here. And I have found every piece of the diagonal. So I can now just compute the diagonals. I can, I can find A, C, and B, B, D, you see? I just add them together, right? I add the pieces together and uh, I figured it out. So let's do that. 
first so we'll try to find a up to c so that's two pieces a m plus m c and we know these pieces what was a m again let's go back up here that's z a over x and what was mc? We found that here. That's uh, ya over w. And uh, cross multiply, we get z. Let's, let's write it in a way we can pronounce zao plus yaks over wx, like that. So we've got that. Very nice. Now, what about the other diagonal? The other diagonal is what? It's BD from B here to D here. So BD is two pieces. It's A, this piece, BM plus MD, but we know MD, so that's A plus Yaz over WX. Okay, so that's, let's cross multiply Wax plus Yaz over WX. Very nice so far, very good. Okay, all we got to do is form the ratio AC over BD. And let's put all these things together. We get Zao plus Yax, and then these things cancel out, all divided by Wax plus Yaz. And here's a super beautiful thing that happens. Watch this magic. The A, the vowel that helps us pronounce these things, it disappears. And I'm left with WZ plus YX over WX plus YZ. And this is uh, Ptolemy 2. And need I write that this has been beautiful, very beautiful proof? I think it's very, very beautiful proof. I want to leave you with some exercises. I'll give you some figures, and for each figure, you write down the Ptolemy 2 theorem. You look at the diagonals, and you see what straddles the diagonals, and write it down as fast as you can. Then you choose an A, and you prove Ptolemy 2 for that figure. Each figure is going to have some scrambled, um, you know, like a labeling scheme or something, or a different A from what we have done in our video. Uh, but this is tremendously good practice for you. So here I have three figures. And the first one is the one that we did above, but I will give you a different A. You start with this. And also write down Ptolemy's theorem. Just look at the labels and write it down. Here I choose this A for you. Okay, and here we'll take a completely different one. This is going to be your A. So write down Ptolemy's theorem. For each one, is going to look different for each one, and then prove it using the A I selected. And if you really enjoy doing this well, you can keep going, you know, choose other A's, choose this A, choose this A, and so on and so on. Well, I really enjoyed this. I think this was a really interesting proof. If you liked it, well, click like and uh, subscribe, of course. And I will try to do Ptolemy Theorem 1 soon and a few other things related to Ptolemy's Theorem that are uh, very interesting and perhaps a bit surprising. And that's it for today. I will see you next time.